Hello, buddy. I am John the Purple Man, and with me today for the first ever JTPM interview hour is Tomato Biscuit. Hey, guys, and thank you for having me, Jonathan. This is quite the honor. Yep. You have to be the first one because you're the greatest person there ever is. Oh, dang. That's quite the uh, quite the statement. I don't know if I can live up to that. <laughs> In my eyes, you have. And still do. Every day. <laughs> oh, so what can I do for you today, my good man? Well, like I said in the intro, interview hour. Let's do first, it. First question, as always, <clears throat> and probably the most important one that any YouTubers probably asked, what got you into YouTube? Okay, what got my stupid self into YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> uh, basically, like to sum it up, without getting into the nitty gritty, is a long time ago I was I was feeling, and, and you'll you'll hear this a lot from YouTubers like something happens or, or just out of nowhere they feel kind of lost or alone or abandoned or 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 these these things that they're they're not necessarily missing something but they feel like they can do more like they they're they have a purpose that they're not fulfilling or, or something of the sort and so for me i just hit a, a period where for for no reason at all i was sad and um uh, you know, I started having real bad anxiety and all these things, and I, I, I started watching the bigs. I started watching Mark, Markiplier, PewDiePie, Jacksepticeye, things like that, and it, it dawned on me that they are all just regular people who had a dream and went out to achieve it, and it, it, it inspired me so much, and I realized that I could do that. Like, I could make content that I'm proud of, and it could help people. And I, I started thinking that if I have the opportunity to help someone, to make someone smile that needs to smile, like it is my honor and my duty to do so. And so that's, that's basically what my whole motto of my channel has been from start to finish is to create the best content that I can, you know, as often as I can to help people. And, and that's just, that's just what I try to do every day. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> but of course that's typical on a youtuber oh yeah so what sets you apart from all the other youtubers out there uh what sets me apart is i i feel like i'm very very genuine like when when i record my videos i'm so proud of everything that i do that like i, I put my heart and soul into it which again i'll every youtuber either does or should do because one of the most important things that i see is a person that's genuine like you can tell that how they're what they're saying and what they're acting like you can feel it you can feel that it's the truth and you can feel that it is defining them and i, I feel like i portray that really well because i am a firm believer that i want to record things that personally make me happy that i'm going to enjoy not because you know i'm selfish and i just me 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 i want to enjoy it but because if i'm doing something i enjoy and that i love i'm going to be more passionate and driven about it which is going to make me make better content for for y'all to watch good point and that's not always the case with all of them <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah not always so they all try to be yeah like you can tell some some uh some YouTubers like really force like a persona or or they're, they're like YouTube personality and nope I'm just I'm just stupid all the time <laughs> it's, it's just natural <laughs> <laughs> all right well mo going on and continuing with the subject of YouTube but also just social media mm -hmm. and life in general as well for that matter <clears throat> what what uh, what kind of gave you? What gave you the idea to kind of branch out from just YouTube line, like move on to Twitter and that kind of deal? Uh, basically, I, I thought to myself, how can I introduce as many people possible to my stupidity, stupidity as quickly as possible? And I was like, Twitter? No, uh, it, it's all about networking. It really is, it, as comes with any business. Because YouTube, when it comes down to it, should be treated as a business because. It, it's taking a lot of time, it's taking a lot of effort, and if you take it seriously, it, it's going to be good, it's going to be better. And, and so as, as with any biz, business, you need to network, you need to, to put your name out there, you need to make connections with people. 
And it, it's actually how I got connected with David Hayter, and uh, I'm gonna be doing a collaboration video with Onision, and just just names like that. And like I have other, other things in the works that haven't been finalized yet, but it's all because I've been devoting a lot of time to networking, and just trying to be as presentable as possible, as as often as possible. Like with with any sort of social media and any sort of thing, you never want to put something out there that you're ashamed of or that it's going to be taken badly like you always want to present yourself in the most respectable way possible the most professional way possible and just present you as you would want to see yourself and if you do that like if you're proud of how you're presenting yourself then only good things are going to come all right makes sense all right so um kind of continuing on <clears throat> what kind of give all of us um, kind of kind of give us an what an a day in the life of tomato biscuit. Um, uh, yeah, I, <laughs> wow, yeah, uh, my days. Like people, people that don't do YouTube kind of think that oh, it's so easy. You just record a video and upload it. When in fact, it is it is exactly the opposite. My my day starts around five in the morning, and usually ends around midnight to one in the morning. Because uh, n uh, not only YouTube, but I have many other things that I'm trying to get taken care of. Like I'm trying to uh, like get in shape and, and do a lot of stuff for my uh, Anision collaboration and later this month. And so I'm doing that. I'm helping my family with a lot of stuff. You know, and then I'm recording and editing lots of hours a day. Um, I, I was, I've been talking about how like for a basic video, it all depends on how much editing I do, but for a one for every minute of video, it takes about an hour of editing, especially for or especially for more editing intensive videos like my bottle flip one or the planking one, like things like that. Like it, it they don't just magically happen. Like it is a lot of effort, and so a, another reason why you have to be driven and passionate about YouTube is because it, you can get burned out on it really fast, and you have to love what you do. As, as with any job so you can you can be the best employee you are and you're you are your own employee <laughs> and if you're not a good employee you're only hurting yourself <clears throat> all right from being from being one of the uh wife lot time subs to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm um, much appreciated. And I've been asked this question a lot of course based on the time it, you have been on youtube of course because uh as I recall, a long while back, and I bet you do too, you posted a video, last video about called Morning Vlog um, Health and Recovery, and then mm. didn't upload for a bit. Yeah. Uh, what, what's the exact deal about that? Uh, basically, I, just everything, like, it, since it was in the beginning of my, my YouTube, I hadn't really planned on how much time and effort it was going to take, and so everything, like, my, my job at the time and, and other work and all this stuff along with YouTube, everything kind of just came into a train wreck at the same time. I, I was trying to do everything all at once and it, it was impossible and I, like I said, I, I just kind of got burnt out. It became, instead of being fun, it became too stressful and it became not, not what I wanted it to be and so I decided that the best way to get my, my channel back on track would be to kind of take a break and come back fresh and I did and I think it I think uh I think I came back better than ever but that's just a narcissistic personal view <laughs> <laughs> all right now for like say other channels mm -hmm. that have tried numerous times to take breaks like I have at times but mm -hmm. it's never worked out because I keep getting called back for other reasons <laughs> I'm not gonna can't, go to detail we can't live without you <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise I know I'm being narcissistic myself but otherwise as I was gonna ask <clears throat> How would you go about explaining to your subs and trying to keep them, you know, hanged in the balance um, about going on to a break, um, if you know what I'm asking? Yeah, um, ab absolutely. Honesty and openness is the best policy, especially with subs and especially with like like you. You've been there from literally the very beginning, and the the easiest thing to do is to be as open and transparent as you're comfortable with. Because that that one makes it, it increases the connection between the YouTuber and the fan base, and I think that's one of the most important connections you can have is the communication and support of your fan base, and vice versa, supporting them. 
and that that's one of the things I love the most. But but what what, what I really think is is the important factor is to kind of just have a have a very open, honest either video or discussion saying why you're taking your break and what your purpose is, even if it's just a hiatus to like there, there's there's no shame ever in taking a break because then you can come back with new ideas and a new outlook and it, it more often than not always ends up better and all the bigs have taken breaks too like like uh, Markiplier recently he realized his channel was going not the way he intended it to and wanted it to and so he wanted to get back to his roots of doing live streams and connecting with his audience and doing what he loved to make a better channel so yeah just honesty and openness when it comes down to it all right now um and like and i'm betting this is and i know this is probably a big problem for a lot of the bigs of course but how do you take and get in touch and keep in touch with your fan base uh i basically do anything and everything i can twitter is a big source of it um i recently opened a discord channel that's been it's been a lot of fun lately uh like and it's a small server so far but like people have been coming in and talking to me a lot and every chance i get i alert people when i'm going to be in the channel so they can come and chat with me and i can interact with them and uh and youtube uh, things too i've been meaning to do other shout out videos and thanking things and i try to stay really up to date on my comments and as well as commenting on my subs videos because like when when people comment on my videos it makes me so happy like i, I just I just kind of like go woo, and, and then I, I alternatively, it, it inspires me to give that feeling to other people. I want other people to have the joy of getting a comment because it, it's such a, it's such a silly concept that oh someone someone wrote on my page, like like that that is a good thing. But if anyone has a YouTube channel and they get their first comment. They understand how awesome of a feeling it is that someone is appreciating the work that they put in. So I want to give that out to people too. So it's, it's all just any way I can helping helping people out. And and just like you asked me for the interview, and I was I was so honored and so glad to agree to that. All right. <clears throat> well, uh, kind of continuing with that and how you mentioned like having to try and stay caught up on videos and all. <clears throat> and I know I haven't been the greatest at that myself. I know that's being extremely narcissistic. It, it's it's tough, man. But, it's tough. But uh, anyways, the question is, um, like, how do you plan on kind of taking and uh, like uh, getting back to like maybe uh, some more shout outs, reading your comments, those kinds of videos? Like, when do you plan on like getting to those? Uh, hopefully later this month. Like, uh, since since I, I keep alluding to it, since I'm I'm going to be collaborating with Anision later this month, who has like a, a total eight million subscribers or something, uh, right now for the next month, I'm really focusing on putting up as much quality content as possible. So if if anyone wants to check out my channel, there's plenty to see. And then after that, I'm going to start focusing back to my roots of you know making my favorite comment videos or people that have tweeted me things that I personally like and just uh, again connecting with people as much as possible because everyone loves to see that they were appreciated and it makes me feel good to, to feel like 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 they matter because they do because I, I couldn't even be here doing this without without y'all and that's why it's so important to me and such a joy for me to do anything I can to help <clears throat> All right. Now, uh, what advice would you give to people who are like working on their own, reading your comments and you know vlogs and um, shoutouts and those kinds of videos? What advice would you give to people for those, like when they're doing them? Hmm. I I would say, again, be genuine. Like that is the most appealing thing that anyone can ever do, especially on a reading your comments or a shoutout video. Be genuine. Like when when you're doing your shoutouts. Make it very personal. Say, you know, this subscriber, you know, did this. They've they've been with my channel for this long. You know, thank you and all that stuff. And for a uh, reading your comments, like have genuine reactions and really really go in depth with answering questions or or responses that you give or or pose your own questions because it, it's always good to. To, to relay the question in a way that'll make people want to interact with your video more and to make the person that asked that question feel like they asked a really good, complex, you know, thought-provoking question. 
So it's, again, just be genuine. All right. <clears throat> now, in terms of like editing those types of videos, <laughs> what advice do you have for not just the people watching, but also like for yourself? Um, uh, keep it, keep it constant. Keep it, keep it a nice steady flow without many pauses, without many, like. It, it, without an, an insane amount of cuts either, but it has to have a good flow because since it's a reading your comments or things like that, there's not gameplay footage going on that people can watch or there's not, you know, many things happening that are keeping the attention other than you on the screen reading the comments. And so it, it's good to put, like, the actual comment on the screen or, or things that people can look at to keep their interest and that that's all it is is keeping it as interesting as possible as smooth flowing as possible and as as real as possible and that always equals a successful reading your comments video oh, good old sonic <laughs> me i'm a dr pepper man <laughs> oh, my mom my mom loves dr pepper can't get her away from dr pepper <laughs> me too <laughs> but <clears throat> anyway um kind of just kind of keeping on with that um i'm trying to think of how to phrase this next one um i had it and i lost it <laughs> i know that feeling i do not like when i do that <laughs> makes me not look good oh no like literally i was interviewing i was interviewing uh, david hater and i i had so many questions planned out that I had memorized, but when I started actually talking to him, I was like starstruck, and all my questions just like escaped me. And luckily, he was super professional and just so easy to talk to that he basically carried it. And I was I was so respectful of that. It was it was a very cool experience. Ah, oh, now I remember what it was. Um, like in terms of the gamers who don't like use computers, like the ones who have like Playstations, Xboxes. Yeah. In cubes, those kinds of, you know what I mean? Like, how do you go about, what advice do you have for, like, people like that? Uh, and recording videos for, like, YouTube. I, it, it'll basically be the same. The capture method is a little different, but, like, you, you'll need a capture device like an Elgato. or They, they make a, a whole bunch of capture devices that can do it. And it's a little more complex personally, but... It, it, it all ends up being the same. You have your game footage, you have your video and audio, and you just mash it all together into some amalgamation of a video and <laughs> and load it up. But uh, it, it can pose different, uh, because when you're actually sitting at a console with a controller, you have to decide how you want the video to be, how you want the camera recording to be. It's, it's a different setting than sitting in a, a little room and you know being at a desk with, with everything set up right here in a nice little package and so it, it's it can add a different feel which is good and I've actually been meaning to record some more uh, PS like PlayStation footage and stuff like that all right <clears throat> now in terms of like um, setting wise for um, people for you know um, computer gamers like me and you um, what would you like what advice do you have for like that like for uh, setting wise for like recording videos uh i mean really it, it's to me a dark room without much natural light you know get a couple sound panels and get a good light and get a good camera i actually i actually put a video up of uh of how to record like using as minimal equipment as possible to have really good quality and it was just like, you know, the microphone that comes on a laptop, if you're using a laptop, your phone, and, you know, like an, like OBS software or something like that. And I, I showed the differences of what the quality is using my webcam that I used for a long time and, and then using my phone. One of, the, one of the biggest things I can think of is get an external microphone. It doesn't have, even have to be anything, uh, you know, expensive or, or super fancy, but an external microphone will cut down a lot of the echo and cut down a lot of the reverb as, as possible and make the audio a lot more clear. All right. Yeah, as for me, I used to have one. I, I used to have a microphone, but my old editor, who will remain nameless, mm. broke it. Ah, yeah, it happens. I mean, stuff, especially uh, software is very, very fragile sometimes. It, and the funny thing of it was, it was my fa it was a, it was it was a very favorite mic of mine. 
Because it oh, looked yeah. like one of those, you know, old-fashioned kind of ones where, you know, you see on the old news footage style ways when you take and you, uh, like in the old 1960s and the microphones they had. You know oh, yeah, I, mean? I, I can, I can picture it perfectly. Yeah, like the ones of, like, the musicians, the, you know what I mean? Those kind of ones, but it was yeah. skinny, mm-hmm. kind of neat. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it happens, man. Like, there's, there's so many things that that you know people have accidentally broken a mine over the years and everything. And it, it, it's so easy yeah. to, yeah, it's so easy to hold people to things. But like to me, the most important thing, especially being a YouTuber and especially being a growing YouTuber, is to be as as lenient as possible and as you know as, as lenient as forgiving and as as caring and loving as possible. Because the more bridges you burn down the harder it is for you to grow. And you, you, no one ever, especially being an aspiring YouTuber, no one wants the reputation of being hard to work with or hard to handle or that, you know, that mm-hmm. it, it's yeah, it's, it's I, easiest I to cooperate and grow your channel. <clears throat> I know what you mean. And, uh, but otherwise, <clears throat> um, for like, uh, oh, great, I had the question and I lost it. <laughs> Again, it happens to me all the time. I I, I, that yeah, I mean, I mean, basically on on a on a different on a different uh, vibe. It's like with a uh, like with my my episodes of Mado Pie that I do. Like I I have uh, PewDiePie's This Book Loves You, mm-hmm. and with with those episodes, um, the thing I love about them, I'm gonna go back to to being genuine, is that I, I just crack the book open read a page and do my initial reaction to the page of what I think that page means. And I wholeheartedly believe that how someone instinctively reacts to information given to them is how they feel and truly believe inside. And it reflects what they think the most purely and genuinely. And so like it, it all goes back to being as genuine on YouTube as possible. And that's that's how you grow. Yeah, and my question came back to me, by the way. Excellent. But for, like, just aspiring YouTubers like me, of course, and, again, mm-hmm. narcissistic attitude, mm-hmm. but uh, just not just me, but for, like, others as well and people who are starting out, but um, for, like, intro to, like, a video. Like, mine, I I know I'm using a, I use a basic one, but I just I don't know how to come up with something better. So, I mean, like, literally, like, like, you see what I'm asking? Like, what would be, like, a kind of a you know, good way of finding out how to like. Uh, I mean, they they uh, create, create their self. They 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 really do create their self. The more videos you make, and if if you go back to my my very very early videos, like you you can see my intro, kind of kind of evolve and come into existence. And uh, like right right now, my my intro is literally just, "Hey guys, to me to biscuit here." That's it. That's my intro, and that's just what that's just what feels comfortable and that's just what it just happens and so whatever your intro is and it can change over time but it'll just happen and that's just what you'll be comfortable with like there's no planning involved there's no sitting down to think of something clever it's just what you're what you're happy with that's a good question i've never been asked that (laughs) yeah i had uh been thinking well while i was at work earlier today i was kind of thinking in my head um, how could I go about changing my YouTube intro? Because I'm so tired of my old this old one. I've been using it for so long, and it's just I'm ready for a change of it. Yeah. But, I, but it's all I've got because it's just it's the common one to use. Because I don't really have something I can come up with on my own at this point in time. And well, I don't I usually mean, have a way of coming up with something as clever as usually. I can't. The it changing things on YouTube is is good and bad because what you do and what you say becomes your channel's brand and it's, it's you're branding yourself just like Markiplier is you know hello everybody my name is Markiplier and PewDiePie is hi I'm PewDiePie and stuff like that like people become <laughs> recognized with their intros Jacksepticeye with his whip crap whip, whip crap whip crack and top of the morning yeah. to you laddies like yeah. y- y- you you stick with whatever comes out naturally and that's what people start associating with you Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the same with movies. It's kind of the same way. Mm-hmm. You, you come to expect something from a certain genre or actor or something mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. <clears throat> so, in terms of your channel and how it's grown, what would you say is 
what would be your prediction for where you see your channel going? Basically, I'm, I, I'm just so proud of where it is right now that, like, it, it's it's hard for me to. I I I put a Twitter a tweet out the other day that I was like, you know, this blank number of people follow me, like willingly follow me, and I was like, what's wrong with you people? Because like to me, I I, I can't imagine like anyone seeing my stuff and being like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna follow this guy or I'm gonna subscribe to this guy. And so it blows me away every time I get a subscriber or a follower, things like that. And so where I see my channel going is just the same direction it's been going, just making content I love and interacting with as many people as possible. And that that's all I want to do. If it doesn't grow anymore, that's fine by me. And if it does, it's a blessing, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> In terms of videos now, and uh, that's from your very first one to your present one now of Outlast 2, why did she do it? <laughs> uh -huh. Part two, which I have seen, by the way, and I suggest <laughs> you see. But anyways, in terms of all the videos up to that one now, what is your favorite one? I'm honestly going to have to say either my bottle flip video or my very, very, very first video, Tomato Hits the Scene? Tomato Hits the Fan? I don't even remember what it was. But like, <laughs> it, it, it's, so, it's so painfully, like, poorly done that it, it just holds such a good place in my heart. It's, it, it's very, very sentimental to me, like watching it again, because I, I can tell how me I was in that video. And like, if, if people watch that video, they instantly know who I am, like, like how I act and things like that, because I was just so excited to make something. And it, it's, it, it's like, it's like my baby. It's, it's, and it, it's so awesome to see of where I started to how it's grown today to to my Outlast video or my Bottle Flip video where I, I put forth hours and hours and hours <laughs> of effort. Of course. <clears throat> now, in terms of just your you on YouTube in general, mm -hmm. um, and I know I I do it at times myself for YouTube. I I look up sometimes just for music, just for myself, um, because I've got some of my own favorite videos on there as it is, but. <laughs> I'm being narcissistic. Everybody does, though. But yeah, to be, to be like, a YouTuber, like I'm, I'm sorry to cut in, but to be a YouTuber, you have to have kind of a narcissistic attitude. You have to think that you're funny and that you're awesome and that you're you're confident. Because if you're not, you're gonna exude not being confident, and no one wants to see that. They want to see confident, charismatic people. So you have to love yourself and be confident in yourself. Okay, continue. Sorry about that. That's fine. But anyways, as I was gonna say, <clears throat> um. For me, a lot of mine is music videos. That's what really makes me happy I to see on YouTube. But anyways, in terms of that, what is like your favorite of videos to look up on YouTube? Oh man, uh, <laughs> this is embarrassing to say. <laughs> but but if, if anyone went to my history, they would just see so many cat videos. <laughs> So many. Oh my goodness. They, they, it, it doesn't end. There's an endless list of cat videos and screaming goats. <laughs> <laughs> and, oh my and, goodness. Yeah, and, I, and, and on that embarrassment, I think we'll wrap this up. <laughs> I got one you, more, though. Okay, you, you've exposed me. <laughs> I know. <laughs> All right, fire away. What's up? <laughs> but anyways, my last one is... But, and this one's not for like the ones that are, for like the ones that are like, you know, confident YouTubers, the ones that actually have, you know, become the way they are, you know, confident, all that kind of deal. What about the ones that aren't? Mm -hmm. Like the ones that are, you know, not really, they're still, they kind of still feel lost or, you know, down the dumps, those kind of people. Like for them in YouTube. Um, you, you see my question? Yeah. Um, basically, sorry, my, my, uh, cat was yelling at the door. Uh, here we go. Uh, basically, everyone comes into their own. It, it, it's the same thing with life, honestly. Like, you, you come into your own and everyone has their awkward phase. Everyone has their phase where they feel like they don't belong or that they need help or or, or things like that. And it's just like, like with YouTube. You, you make videos that you aren't sure about. You, you're not sure if people are going to like them. You're not sure if people are going to watch them and things like that. But the more you do it, you, you have to appreciate the effort you put in. And it, it, again, it's just like life. You have to appreciate what you do, the effort you put into your own life and yourself. 
because that's the only way to have a successful good life is to be proud of yourself and to work hard and to love what you do and it's it's weird how much YouTube carries over to to life itself be happy work hard do what you love and you know make friends and be nice to people and help people and and that honestly leads to a successful in life and successful YouTube it's just you but you again you have to work to come into your own and you can never give up giving up is is just the the poison of YouTube and the poison of life like no one should ever feel like they're they're uh, you know bullied into giving up like I, on my made pies I've been talking about bullying a lot lately and it, it no one should ever let someone convince them that what they believe in their heart is right is is wrong unless it's something crazy like murder or something but, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like th there's always the you know the the crazy outlier but it, it, it's all about just working hard to find yourself and when you find yourself like appreciating that comfort and that you know that appreciation of yourself that you found because if you it's it's so much easier I know I'm kind of talking a lot it's, it's, it's so much easier to lose confidence in yourself than gain it and to lose trust in yourself then gain it and so it's, it's a constant battle every day with YouTube and with life to be the person you know the the son the husband the brother the father like to be the person you want to be and you always want to be better than you were yesterday and you know not as good as you're gonna to be tomorrow because no matter what you can always improve you can always improve your channel you can always improve your life and that, that's kind of what I, that like to me that's a good thing I want to end with is just work hard in everything you do to be the best that you can be because you never know how it's going to help someone else and how it's going to affect someone else. Someone may be, you know, watching you that you don't know that really needs someone to be an inspiration to them. And if, you know, you may be helping people left and right that you don't know about that pe they might be afraid to tell you. And so you, you should always live with the notion that what you're doing could help someone and so so do good that's it just do good <laughs> all right thank you tommy tomato biscuit you know it <clears throat> thank you so much thank you for and having thank, me and and thank you for taking the time out of your very busy schedule that i know you've got to be willing <laughs> to do this no problem brother like it's like seriously it was a, it was a huge honor and i'm very humbled that you you especially wanted the first episode to be with me. That's very cool. Thank you very much. Well, you were the one that's actually been one of the biggest inspirations for my channel. And you and Mark Bull. Thank you. <laughs> and that's part of the reason why I feel mine's grown is partially because of you. Thank is you very much. Because of how much you and I have worked together and still do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and will do later on in the future, of course. Absolutely. But... I'm just so humbled that you were willing to take time out of your extremely busy schedule for this quick interview. Oh no, it, it's it's again like it's, it's it was a lot of fun. I'm I'm so glad to have done it. <clears throat> and that marks the end for this interview. But before we can end off, I have some important news for my subs and anyone who else is watching this. That is a follower, Mado. <clears throat> I may not be on for very much. Um, in these coming few years because of some a very life changing decision I have made um, that decision comes directly at a good point in my life thankfully because I am just getting close to graduating high school with, and being the first of a, a grandchild of my family to graduate with the diploma since the other didn't since there's only two grandchildren in my family but moving on and I will be, I've already gone through a lot of the paperwork for it. I've already spoken to one of the uh, men involved with this. And I, well, I will be enlisting into the Marines. Now, I know it's not really easy for me to really say much about, but I'm going to have to lay it right out there, guys. Yeah, that, that's a huge decision, man. That's, that's very, very cool of you. Like, I, I honestly wish you absolutely the best it's going to be life-changing and you know it, I, nothing 
nothing but good to come to you. That's that's all I and and all your fans and subscribers would ever want. So that's that's huge, and I hope you're able to keep us updated. That'd be really cool. I go. I want to try as much as I can. At least as much as I can, at least. Yeah, yeah, understandable. <clears throat> but uh, I just wanted all you guys to know that ahead of time. So even you, of course. So all of you guys know ahead of time. Um, it's it's still in the early stages, but at least that's when they'll have things looking right now. It looks like. Hmm. I think it's a it's a very very good career choice. I, I've had a uh, family in the military, and you know it's it's very it's very promising. So I hope you rock it. I know you'll do awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. And as always, guys, I will see you guys in my next video. And so we'll made it, of course. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> and don't forget to go subscribe to me and Mado. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.